Hey there everybody, in this video we're going to talk about a few tools and systems that you should have set up so that you can be a lot more efficient when you're creating digital marketing. I do a ton of digital marketing and I work primarily as a one-man show, so it's important that I have all of these systems set up so that I can be as efficient as quickly. I'm going to give you my best tips and tricks so that you can get faster and far more effective when it comes to creating campaigns or writing emails or basically any kind of marketing activity that you're doing. Let's get into today's video. Hey there, my name is Brandon Brashears. I create daily digital marketing videos, so if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. And if you ever have any questions or comments or need help with anything, comment below. Happy to answer questions on this channel. If you ever need help with your marketing, head on over to maverickdigitalmarketing.com where you can request a 30 minute marketing ideas session with me. So if you're looking to grow and need help, be sure to submit a request there. So let's talk about how to become a far more efficient marketer. So I do a ton of client work. I'm creating email campaigns all the time, Facebook ads all the time, Google AdWord ads. And I've done a few things that really, really helped me in my marketing activities. Now, one of the first things that I think is very, very important, especially if you're doing a lot of creative work where you're creating landing pages and it's not necessarily like I'm doing graphic design or that kind of creative. I'm not a graphic designer, absolutely. I'm a good marketer, but graphic design is not one of my strengths. But having um, a style guide and also naming conventions for all of the things that I'm saving, and whether it's logos or you know banner ads or things like that, I want to make sure that I'm super clear on what each of the items is that I have and the different assets that I have without having to go through and look at things. So I'm gonna give you some examples here. With the style guide, there's a few things that I wanna have. I wanna have logos and different versions of the logos if they have them. Can't tell you how many times clients are super, super picky about their logos, like ones that are white, or ones that are black, or what ones to use with the white black background, or which ones to use with the colored background. Very, very picky, and I get it. They love their brand and their brand name. So make sure that you have that set up. Also, make sure that you have the fonts that they're using or that you're using so that you can go and set it up really quickly. If you're using something like Canva or if you're using you know, Photoshop or whatever it is to create graphic images for your ads, make sure that you have access to the different fonts that they're using and also the images that they use and the logos that they have. And then on top of that, you need the brand colors that they're using. For my business, Maverick Digital Marketing, I have a style guide that I had my assistant, our graphic designer, Jacqueline, create, and she did an amazing job with it. She put it all together so that I don't have to go back and try to figure out what it is. It's all in one place, and then I have all of the different logos set up. I also like to put the logo sizes inside of the file names. That way I don't have to search around for the bigger version of the logo or a high resolution version. And same thing with banner ads that I'm doing. I do ads both in Google Display Network and Facebook, and so I wanna make sure that I don't have to look around and try to figure out what uh, size or orientation the image is in. It saves a ton of time that they're named the, the specific, typically campaign name, and then the file size. So, for example, when I have a client that we're doing a webinar for a specific topic, it will be the topic name ads, and then the actual size, pixel size of them. And if I have a follow-up campaign, it'll be campaign name follow-up. So like if I have a webinar or something, and then post webinar, it'll be the name of that, that post follow-up sequence and then the file size. So having that naming convention of the files is really, really helpful. And it just helps to cut down in time when you're trying to figure out where to put everything. The second thing that saves me tons of time is by using LastPass. And if you have a team and you're using all kinds of softwares, LastPass is a great tool because it allows you to share the passwords and not have to remember them. I can't tell you how many softwares I have memberships to, whether it's PictoChart or Powtoon or Adespresso or different Facebook accounts or different Google accounts. I have all of those passwords in one place. I don't have to remember them and I don't have to search for them. All I have to do is remember one single password. And that's really, really helpful. It saves me so much time and it's really, really valuable. It does cost money, but it just is tremendously valuable to me in time savings and being able to share things with my team. The other thing that saves me a ton of time when I'm doing marketing is having a naming convention for the campaigns that I'm running. That way when I'm trying to analyze results, I can know what the campaign was, what the objective was, who made it or who's made any changes to it, and then figure out what's going on from there. 
So for example, if we have a campaign that's in Google AdWords, that's for a specific account, typically we'll do the objective, the placement, the type of ad campaign that we're running, and also the, the location that we're going to be running. So I'll give you an example. When I run local ads for veterinarians, um, and it's typically local Google ads in search network, it will be veterinarian name, it will be search campaign, and then it'll be the search terms so like veterinarian near me, and then it'll have my initials and then BB so that I know that I did it and I made it. And that way I understand exactly who it's for, what we're trying to achieve, what's the objective of the campaign, and who made it. And that way I'm able to see and, and run through a ton of ad accounts quickly and not have to look things up. And so it's just helpful to name campaigns that way so that especially if I wanna go back and I wanna see ads that worked well, or see ads that didn't work well, or try to find examples of what I've done in the past, it's very, very helpful in that I don't have to try and remember, you know, what was test campaign number four, which I've come across a lot of campaigns and companies, they run campaigns with no description inside of that. So it's very, very difficult to figure out, you know, what was the objective of this campaign? On the other side of that too, I think that a naming convention for retargeting audiences is so important. Be far more descriptive. Be sure to put dates in there, especially if you're uploading um, retargeting lists specifically. It is so helpful to know who is it that we're targeting and then re be able to reuse that in the future in a clear and concise way. With retargeting audiences, I won't put my name in it or the person who made it, but I will be just far more descriptive. So making sure that I'm saying it's Facebook, any engagement, past year, and that, that way I know that it's a Facebook engagement audience. And then, you know, also for web traffic or top 25% web traffic or uploading of lists, when I do upload the lists, I wanna make sure that I have the dates in there so that I know which one is most recent and things. But having that clear naming convention is super important. It just makes things so much easier to figure out. Another thing that naming conventions are very important for is that if you have tags like inside of Infusionsoft or other programs, just understanding how those tags get applied and then you're able to organize your contacts and your leads in a way that's meaningful to you. It's so easy to go through and just name something, a crappy name in the beginning, but then you have to go searching for it. Whether it's files, retargeting audiences, contacts, whatever it is, it just adds so much time. You're constantly looking through files, trying to search for names and remembering what you named things. It saves you so much time. So be sure to set up naming conventions for everything you do. Then you don't have to even think about it, what you should name it, and it saves you just a tr tremendous amount of time. The next things that save me a tremendous amount of time are keyword lists. If I have a keyword type search, keywords that I can be using over and over again. So for example, when I have campaigns set up for businesses that are similar to each other, that are in different areas of the country, so that's like local specifically businesses, and this I think applies to agencies a lot. And if you're doing campaigns and you're trying to test new things all the time, it does make sense to set this up, but put all of your pre-work into a Google doc or a Google spreadsheet. That way you can copy and paste it and reapply it in the future. And you don't have to log into the accounts or try to dig it up and find it. And this helps you to reduce the duplication that you have to do over and over again. Especially if you have a list of negative keywords, it's very helpful to have it set up so that you can just copy it and paste it. <coughs> and I think the last tip that I like to use as much as possible is to set up templates for everything that I possibly can. So when I create email campaigns, I will save it as a template if I have a new indoctrination sequence that I'm doing or a new email follow-up or webinar follow-up sequence or an abandoned cart sequence. I will template all of these things so that I can reuse them at some point and then I'll name them a, a name that I can look up and reference. And that way, if I want to take something and adjust it, I know that, oh, I've already written a great abandoned cart email for physical products. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to adjust it. Or if I have swipe files that I find that I really like to do, I, I make sure that I'm naming those and then making those as templates, adjusting it based on the business and the needs that we have going forward. Templates don't just rely on, are just based on copy though. You have templates for, you know, specifically like thumbnails. You have templates for Instagram posts, you know, as much as you can template your work, especially if you're trying to produce a ton of work at scale, you have to start to really do, do processes that are duplicatable need to be systematized. And so templates help you to do that. You're able to give, um, you know, really high quality results 
but you're able to work smart. You don't have to custom build everything every single time. So templates are fantastic. Things that I like to template are thumbnails, um, specific posts. I like the template formats of content. So whether it be video, podcasts, you know, anything is, is templated. Like for example, even these videos are templated, right? I have the intro, I have the description of what we're going to talk about. I talk about the channel a little bit and then I get into the topic, right? So those are templated as well. And then um, it, it just is important to, especially with writing and email sequences, it can be very time consuming. And so anytime you have something that you've written, be sure to reuse that, repurpose it, especially if you're, you're testing out new ideas. It's super difficult to write from scratch, but if you can start from a place where you're being, you know, using proven specific principles, those templates are very, very helpful and they'll cut down a ton of time for you. I would love to know, do you have any specific time-saving tips that just really, really help you in your business? Be sure to comment below with them. I would love to know. And if you have any questions or comments or need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day, everybody.